Hey pilots, welcome to Eleven's Hangar. I've noticed that there have been some new recruits. On behalf of Eleven's Hangar and Race Squad, welcome. Today, we will be covering decoupled flight in atmosphere. As usual, I will be piloting the Drake Buccaneer. I'm trying some new visual additions today, so let me know what you think in the comments. Now let's head down to Hurston's atmosphere and cover a few basics before we go into the suite. We are now in session. Okay, pilots. So we're at Hurston right now. We're in atmosphere. We're at 9,526 meters from the ground, according to the altimeter. That's a little off. <laughs> so um, let's go over a few things. Right now, we're in coupled mode. There is gravity here. Independent flight control systems are active. That's what's keeping us in the air right now. We're not putting any inputs in, we're just hovering. Being that the gravity pulls down, you can see that the thrusters that are active are the ones that are under the ship, keeping us suspended in the air. What IFCS does is stabilize your flight. So when you start to go forward, you don't have to compensate for gravity, you just go forward. You can see by the, the two arrows right next to the reticle pointing towards each other, that's your velocity indicator showing or direction indicator showing you the direction that you're actually going in. If you're not moving, it goes away. independent flight control systems job is to bring you back to zero and keep your flight stable so when we're not putting in an input like we're going forward now you can see it on the uh, screen once we let go IFCS is going to automatically try to bring us back down to zero so I want you to think for a moment what does this mean when you're actually maneuvering what does this mean when you go from moving in this direction and maybe you do that and you go in that direction what is it that starts to happen? If you haven't guessed it, I'll tell you. The independent flight control system is always trying to bring your ship back to zero. So when you go to add another axis of movement to what you're doing, the ship is going to be fighting you a little bit trying to slow you down. That coupled with G-Safe. G-Safe is also to keep, to keep your pilot from blacking out or redding out doing, due to high G maneuvers. So if you have all these things in place, it is slowing your ship down. When you hit atmosphere, the wind resistance and the gravity itself is going to slow you down. And then your flight controls on top of that are going to additionally, they're going to slow you down. So what do we want to do? So let's take a look here. Once again, I'm going to show you the velocity indicator just so you can see it. We start to go forward, it shows up. We start to go in the other direction, you see it moving. As we start to change the input, it starts to move. Because we're in coupled and we're in gravity, if we turn, it'll start to it'll, see the indicator. It brings itself back in front of us to show us which way we're going. So what we're going to do right now is we are going to remove IFCS by disabling coupled mode. So let's go to the outside view. Let's take a look at those thrusters again. I'm going to disable coupled mode in three, two, one. Thrusters turn off. We are falling. You'll notice our rate of, our rate of descent starts to pick up. You see the very bottom of the screen, you'll see that indicator that I was talking about. 
down. So let's turn our nose to actually see where it is, to see what direction we're going. So when we aim straight down, the velocity indi indicator comes back up in our face, which means that we are falling straight to the ground. Fast. So you show you what I was talking about here. See what happens when we go back into coupled mode. IFCS will turn back on in three, two, one. Thrusters kick on, our descent slows, we're hovering in place again. Now we'll go over this a little bit more in depth in the suite, but I just wanted you to see that so you have an idea of what is happening when you're flying in atmosphere. Your ship will help keep you in the air, but when it comes to doing maneuvers, like the ones like the Immelman maneuver that we went over in a different video, or the split S maneuver, IFCS and coupled mode are going to slow you down. You'll still be able to perform the maneuver, but you're gonna have a little bit additional resistance than with just the IFCS system being on. I'll see you in the suite. Okay, welcome to the suite. So, to get started, we're going to go with, um, I'll put this up here, it's the pull of gravity on the planet we currently live on, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, we don't have hard numbers for Hurston, Microtech, and Damar in regards to their pull. So, we'll just go based on this, just to get a representation of gravity and its pull downwards. This blue arrow is going to represent gravity. The red is going to represent thrust. So let's start off with coupled mode. We're in coupled mode. We're in atmosphere. We're sitting still and we're hovering. Coupled mode and IFCS, like we talked about earlier, is going to apply thrust to keep your ship These thrusters are firing. There's a few around the bottom of the ship. They're firing downwards to keep your ship level. And in, at, you know, at whatever altitude that you're at. Now, when we talk about moving in certain directions, the pull of gravity is there. Let's say that we took our ship we turned it that way, set it to SEM, and hit cruise control. We're going to come off the nose of the ship. We're going to draw a straight line. That is pretty much the direction that we would go. And our ship would stay in its position. And what would happen is the pull is down. So the thrusters that need to be firing. To keep us in this position, they would be pushing that way, pushing that way, pushing that way, to keep the ship in the position that it's in, you know, while moving forward. So we'd have our main thrusters pushing us in that direction if we set cruise control. That's what that would look like. Meanwhile, gravity's pull, you know, is doing its thing to pull us down. In decoupled, I mean, in coupled mode with IFCS, that's the direction that we would. That's the direction that we would go. So we'll do another line. If we were in decoupled mode, and we we don't have the option for cruise control at that point, but we could apply forward thrust. If we only applied applied forward thrust as the input our direction would look a lot more like that because these forces are not there anymore we only have forward so you figure we'll take this here we've got thrust going that way We've got gravity 
pulling that way which means that depending on what our thrust and the pull was our direction will make that green you know will be somewhere in there it will be a representation of gravity pulling us down and our thrust pushing us forward Now, if we want to be able to maintain this, we're going to have to put the inputs in manually. This is why I recommend a stick and throttle, two sticks, two sticks and pedals, a stick and pedals, any combination of those peripherals so that you can apply the amount of thrust. In this case, it would be right, it would be right strafe, you know, to keep you up because the ships turn that way so you know let's to make it simpler we want to do that we're going to turn the ship directly that way get these out of the way for just a second and go red and our thrust is going this way right and to counteract gravity, our thrust also needs to go this way. So in this case, that would be right strafe. As you know on the keyboard, if you hold down right strafe, you know it's going to go full 100%. And instead of going straight, we'll use green. Your ascent would look something like that. You'd still be going forward, but you'd be going up. Which is why, you know, having a stick or pedals or something like that would allow you to be able to manage the amount of thrust in this direction to keep you going in a straight line while decoupled. Why is any of this important? Well, let's talk about that. We know that when our ship is in this position and we go and decouple like you saw in the video, we'll start to drop, right? We don't know what the pull is, but we do know that the rate of descent increases as time goes by. We start to fall faster and faster. What's good about that? What if you have a ship on approach, he's almost in gun range. And you want to drop down, but you want to drop down beneath them, but still be able to keep eyes on. Now, if you're flying forward, and we'll go to what our thrust is, if we're going forward towards that ship, just before he gets in the gun range, and we also want to get down and under him, force him to have to aim down. We apply thrust in this direction we know that it's not 9.8 but it is something we also know because IFCS allows provides enough thrust thrust to let the ship hover that it's highly likely that the ship provides enough thr the thrust the ship provides exceeds whatever the pull is meaning that if we add thrust to the downward direction our acceleration down would be faster than it was when we just watched it drop meaning what meaning that the time that it would take to get in this position here or here would happen a lot faster if we actually down strafed and after and used afterburner in the direction that is in alignment with the pull of gravity so things are able to happen fast. Things are able to happen faster. For instance, let's say that this ship was behind us. And the distance between these two ships, we'll just say, was 3,000 meters in closing 
we could do a maneuver. This is something that I do sometimes. Where we would roll into a descent and then come out under and come out underneath the ship. And then from there we could pull up underneath them or tuck in behind them. But what's cool about doing this maneuver in atmosphere in decoupled mode is that once you get to right about here and you add afterburn to that so right about there to right about here the time that it takes to do this in this section here it happens very fast and if you time it based on the distance that the target is from or that your you know your attacker is from you you can do this maneuver and be in a different position within this 3000 meters whereas he's going to have to compensate if he gets in firing range he's going to have to bring his nose down he may even have the fl and you know and if he's not in decoupled and he brings his nose down while he's going forward he's actually also going to start to come down but the point being is is that gravity's pulled downwards allows maneuvers that involve going that involve going down to happen a lot faster for instance getting low altitude to dodge a missile or in a, a another scenario like uh, this one let's say that you're headed you know you're flying the ships behind you about 3,000 meters he locks a missile and you know you've got a limited amount of time to pop your countermeasures and get out of the way but you also have an opportunity to maybe get out of sight where the pilot doesn't have line of sight for your ship you know and the missiles tracking the maneuver that you do even when you're flying in a straight line you're always going to drop so it allows you an opportunity to if the missiles coming in to really spread your countermeasures out you know like you could drop down really quickly and, and let let one or two go go back up really quickly let one or two go as opposed to being slowed by coupled mode IFCS and it's want to maintain your flight path it does that by limiting what actually happens in regards to your maneuvering thrusters because remember it is functioning to keep your pilot conscious and to keep you on where your nose is is to keep you on that flight path without deviation when you remove that and you're at the mercy of gravity you can use that pull of gravity to benefit you where something as simple as rolling into a turn You'd roll, but you'd also lose altitude as you did it. And hopefully that's ma hopefully that's making sense. What it does is it just frees you up to be able to use this downward pull to your advantage. Like if you were, then maybe there's a target that was, you know, at a lower altitude, not moving as fast. You'd be able to close on him a lot faster than you would with a coupled mode on why because the thrust that you apply in this direction the thrust you apply in this direction is also having whatever gravity's pull added to it so even though it doesn't work beyond your top speed for your ship in regards to acceleration it does increase it drastically and allows you to close distances a lot faster The other thing it does is if you were going into a maneuver where you, let's say you were going to go up and come around like that, you know, like the element, the element that we had discussed. When you get to the point that's right about here and there, gravity and the lack of IFCS is going to allow your ship without input even though you you know you already set your ship in the position there's no IFCS slowing you down 
gravity is going to start to bring you back down it's also going to bring your nose around So I'm, I'm, I hope that this is making making some sense. I, I realize that in the video, you know, I can only say and show so much. But my my intent in this was to show you that there are benefits to flying in decoupled in atmosphere, and you can actually use whatever gravity's pull is to your advantage. I also, you know, and we know that uh, if you've been following Star Citizen information that they, they talked about uh, control services being worked on, whereas I think for some ships, the shape, weight, thrust does factor in. I don't think it factor, factors in for all the ships the way that it should, meaning that, you know, ships being aerodynamic and the ability for you know wind to pass over them when they're in atmosphere I don't think that's functioning for every ship it seems to do pretty well for the Buccaneer pretty well for the air for the air Gladius, the Sabre um, and even the uh, Starfighters it seems to do pretty well Vanguard series 2 So hopefully this shed a little light on things and um, maybe brought a little bit of understanding to what is actually happening in atmosphere when you're flying and what the difference is with coupled and decoupled. I'd say basically coupled mode is always, you know, trying to keep it the safest. So there is a little bit of a resistance and slowdown that happens in there, whereas decoupled is totally dependent on your inputs. The one thing that I would, you know, make a make a note of and be mindful of is your distance between where you currently are in the ground and your closure rate. How how fast your how fast the ground is coming up. In regards to practice, what I would suggest to do is start at 100 meters per second, have a imaginary floor that you're not going to go under. So let's say you know I'm going to work on these maneuvers. I'm not going to go lower. Than 800 meters from the ground and then as you get more comfortable you increase the maneuvers that you're trying you know increase your speed from 100 meters per second to 200 then to 300 400 and so on until you get comfortable with what your closure rate is from the ground and different maneuvers with the ship of your choice so I hope that this was shed some light on some things like I I hope that I, I hope that it did. I am um, I explained this the best way that I knew how using some examples to kind of you know give a representation of some things. Please also watch the links. I'm going to put some links to some other videos for you to be able to see combat and atmosphere and decouple. And um, you know we're going to go into final thoughts, talk about a few things, and I definitely look forward to hearing from you guys. All right. If you're used to coupled flight, flying an atmosphere decoupled may take a bit of getting used to. I'd start by taking your ship of choice into atmosphere on Daymar, Hurston, or Microtech for some practice. Being able to confidently fly in decoupled and coupled in atmosphere will add some depth to your combat ability and also assist in making your maneuvers less predictable in an engagement. Now there are a few videos where I'm flying decoupled in atmosphere and you may not have even noticed. I will link them at the end of this video. This session has concluded. Stay frosty pilot and I'll see you in the verse. 11 out.